Hey everyone, Captain Kimo here, and this is an update on my workflow for 2015. I know I haven't posted anything this year, I don't think, but uh, before it's 2016, I wanted to get something out, so let's get started with um, my new workflow. Now, some of you probably already know that I am working on a new camera, or I'm working with a new camera, and that's the, uh, the Samsung NX500. So the past year I've just been all over with cameras. Um, I started with the Canon and then I jumped into the Sony AR7 and then the Nikon D5300. And now I am with the Samsung NX500. And the reason is because I'm using that to shoot uh, 4K video. So I like the camera. It's pretty awesome. Uh, my workflow is pretty much the same with uh, all the other cameras hasn't really changed much so uh, I'll update you on kinda what I've been doing now so let's uh, let's get started we'll start with uh, Lightroom this is where I usually start with all my photos this is in Lightroom so let's go ahead and find a couple of photos to work with uh, I have some photos here let's go into the uh, the Jupiter lighthouse and we will pull up some photos from the waterway so here's the photos that we'll start working with here. This is the uh, three photos here. Now you can see here that I've already did some editing in it in Lightroom. So, and that's just to, to do a test run for this video. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset the uh, reset the file. So we'll go into the develop module over here. I'm going to go ahead and click that. It's going to take a little bit. It's been uh, taking a while because of the uh, the file. Um, the Samsung NX500 is a 20, uh, 28 megapixel file, so or it produces 28 megapixel files. Uh, let's go ahead and reset. Let's, let me do reset the uh, each file back to its original. Alright, so with that done, let's go ahead and select all three again. So this is how I start with my uh, my photos before I uh, create my HDR image in Photomatic. So I'll start with the, uh, or I'll select all three, all three exposures that I'm going to work with. Um, the NX500 produces the overexposed image first. So I always start working with the, uh, just the evenly exposed image, the regular exposure. So I click on that and the first thing I do is I just hit the auto here in Lightroom. And so once I get the auto you can see it's pulled up a lot of the uh, the fill cover in the shadows. Um, and then what I do is I will bring up the vibrance a little bit and saturation some. This is not on all photos for this particular photo that's what I will do. And then I will go into the detail and then I will sharpen the image here and then just bring up the noise reduction. And that's that's usually the basics of what I do with the uh, in Lightroom. So once I get that done, I'll hit the sync button and this will sync all three of the exposures that I have selected here, these three exposures. And then it will sync the uh, the files together. And then I'll go to the overexposed image. And what I will do th now is hit auto on the overexposed image. Once I hit auto, I'll also hit the sync. So then it'll sync all three again. And then it does its thing. And now I'm ready to export into Photomatics. So I just right click, export, and into Photomatics. And I click that, and then I get my my little window here. I'm going to want to align all the images. I'm going to reduce noise. Now I've changed. I used to reduce noise on all the uh, source images. Now I'm just doing it on the normal exposure and the unexposed or the uh, the underexposed image. So we'll do that. Um, there wasn't any ghosting, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, reduce chromatic aberration. I'm just going to leave that unchecked. Uh, you can check it, uh, and if, if you are running into problems with that, now uh, with that done we can hit the export and then Lightroom will process the files and send them off into Photomatics 
Okay, so here's our image in Photomatix, and this is on the default preset. Um, what I'll do from here is I'll just, of course, just go into the presets and kind of figure out which uh, which one of the uh, the processing tone mapping uh, that I'd want to use. So for this photo, I'm gonna go with the uh, the balance or the balance has using the uh, the contrast optimizer and that's the one I am going to work with because for this photo it just looks better it's a little cleaner um, if I were just gonna use like detail enhancer that's a little too grungy I mean, it looks cool I can use that if I wanted but uh, for uh, this tutorial we're gonna keep it with the contrast optimizer now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the strength I'm gonna bring that up, and I'll just bring some of the detail here in the uh, the shadows. I'll bring tone compression up and lighting effects up. And now it's just kind of brighten everything. And what I want to do is darken it up, uh, so it'll make it look like it's sort of morning colors, early morning colors. And that looks good. And let's see, I'll play with the midtone and that looks good and then color saturation I'll bring it up and then temperature I'll I'm probably gonna wanna move it to the right side there just where it's a little warmer and that's that's pretty much what I'll do it looks good there I might wanna darken it up bring it down a little bit maybe try to get it just a little darker Let me just bring the white right about there. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. It looks good from here, and now I'll go into Photoshop, and I do that easily from uh, Photomatix by saving it. So I'll just go to Files, or first I have to apply these uh, the tone mapping settings. So hit the Apply, and once uh, Photomatix applies the uh, the settings into the HDR image we're gonna save it and then uh, go into Photoshop and then I'll edit it from there now my workflow here um, might seem a little slow but it's actually pretty quick once once I get going so let's uh, go into the, um, uh, the save here the save as and what I'll do is I'll save it into a folder called HDR and then I'll have this as a TIFF 16-bit and now I have opened the image in Photoshop, so now it's kind of it'll automatically save it and then open it in Photoshop. Now I'm going to overwrite that because that's I've like I said I processed this earlier, so there's a file that's exactly the same. So I'm just going to overwrite it and then it's going to open it straight in Photoshop. So that means I don't have to go around looking for the file and opening it. Um, this saves a lot of time. So now when I have it in Photoshop, I just do my thing. I might run a little Topaz denoise. And then, um, uh, for instance, I see some halo here. I might want to fix that. I'll show you how I do that in some of my images. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll create a new file. And then what I'll do is you can see that there's it's kind of light in that area. So what I'll do is I will go into the sample tool. I hit I for that. That's the eyedropper tool to sample the colors. And I want a color that's a little darker than what is there so I'm probably gonna sample right around there and then we're gonna go ahead and fill that so edit fill um, also I wanted to mention that uh, the, the screen record the pointer is probably not exactly where it should be because of the screen I'm using a, a 4k monitor and the uh, my video recording software uh, does it records the 4k it just doesn't uh, have the uh, the pointer in the right spot so that's causing some wacky uh, issues where the pointers somewhere else so uh, just disregard that so let's go ahead so what I did here was I, I filled it and then I put on darkened and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a layer mask and then I am going to inverse that mask make you select that mask hit control or command I on a Mac and this will make that black and then what I'll do is I'll just hide that layer and then I'll need my paintbrush tool here make sure it's on white and then what I'll do is I will 
Set the opacity to maybe about 20%. Let's make that brush a little smaller. And then we're just going to kind of brush around the areas where it kind of looks like it's there's a halo around that uh, the building and the trees and by doing this it just kind of darkens that area up a little bit doesn't make the uh, doesn't make the halo as uh, noticeable so let's do a little more there around here right, that looks oh, that's good so let's go ahead and zoom out and then we'll go ahead and so this is before and then this is after you can see the hate the halo around here is just not as noticeable all right so so that that's good there next I'm probably I'm gonna go ahead and do the control alt shift e Basically compressing all the files together into one layer and then I'm going to hit the screen here and this will lighten everything what I want to do here is I just want this affected with the screen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the mask and then and then invert that mask and just go ahead and just start brushing back in the uh, that area where the screen was taking effect so it just brings out the the building some now there's all there's so many other ways you can do this and um, you can also do it with sh or uh, shadow and highlights that might be a little easier um, but for this one I'll just do it like this and let's go ahead here so this is before and after um, next I will I will go ahead and just flatten it and then save it um, the other things I might do would probably be just the uh, the topaz D noise, but I'm not gonna go and do that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go and save it, save as, and then I have everything accessed here in my quick. All right, so I'll have everything here for where I need to save it. I'll just all the photo all the folders here I just hit this, this is a zero final this would be where I save all my final uh, files that I process in Lightroom so I just click that and hit save and then we will be ready to finalize everything in uh, Lightroom so now I just go into Lightroom and then go into the library let's go into library and then we will we will go into the uh, you can see where that the zero final um, I'll click that and just hit the sync and then it'll sync the folder together and it will show me the uh, that HDR photo that we just saved into that folder and now I go into the uh, develop module and I just finalize my image and go ahead and crop it a little bit Pull some to get rid of the, uh, the little white edges, and now I I like to also sometimes I like to hit the auto and just kind of see uh, what it does. Okay, I don't quite like it, so I just Control Z to undo that. Um, with this, I'm gearing more towards maybe darkening the sky some. Maybe adding some contrast up there, and then darkening the the water. So I'm just kind of get the eye to draw back into the, uh, the center here where the uh, the little houses are, and then I will pull the contrast. Next, I will maybe play with the detail sharpen it up some maybe bring up the noise or reduce the noise some and then the last thing I'm probably gonna do for this tutorial would be create a little vignette around the photo and that looks good let's let's let me warm it up just a little see what happens okay so 
So it looks good, a little warmer. I might want to bring the shadow up a little bit. And then maybe play with the tone curve. Alright, so that looks good. So that, that's pretty much everything I do. And then I just export it out and then post it on my website. Now let's, uh, let's take a look at the before and after here. So this is before. And then this is after I get done with uh, Lightroom. So before and after. And then that's that's it. That, that's my update on my workflow for doing HDR images um, with the three programs. Um, so... With that said, uh, hopefully I'll have another video for you later and uh, update you on some more stuff. Um, leave, me, or leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and uh, I'll get back to you uh, whenever I can. All right, I'll talk to you later. Captain Chemo signing out.